Now, if you notice, I have around me tonight sisters. I want to send a message to the entire world that the world is in the condition that is in because the world disrespects women. The world is headed into hell because the world disrespects womanhood. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the major contributor to the free of women. Unfortunately, traditions that are foreign to Islam have crept into Islam to push the woman out of that which Almighty God intends for her. The oppression of women in the world is a manifestation of the weakness of the societies of the earth. Listen, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Allah is self-created. The Quran says, he begets not, nor was he begotten. Well, if he was not begotten, he's self-created. And if he's self-created and created himself out of the black womb of the darkness of space, think about this now. He has so much respect for that womb, he kept going back into it, creating sun and moon and stars and planets. Whenever a people disrespect the womb, they cut off their creative powers. When you disrespect woman, you disrespect that which absolutely shows you a part of the nature of God himself. This is why the oft-repeated words of the Quran Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You have a Rahman and you have a Rahim. You have the pot coming out of the nature of God, out of the love of the Creator. He creates and does good for all His creatures. Then there's another part out of His love called Rahim, or mercy, undeserved kindness where he gives to you and you don't deserve anything. A mother will love her child when it is wrong. She will love it and be kind to it when it doesn't deserve it. This is part of her nature. When man denies woman, he denies a part of his own nature that gives him balance. This is why the world is messed up today. You have denied woman and you have denied the quality of mercy in your own self. So I have sisters around me to say to the whole world, the woman must play an important part in the development of the nation or the nation will go to hell. The woman must not be looked at, brothers, as an object of pleasure and something to bear babies with no intelligence. Any nation that has an uncultivated woman becomes an uncultivated nation. It is a foolish man who denies the mosque to the woman. The woman should be in the mosque because when she knows the Quran, studies the Quran, takes the Quran and internalizes it, 
She takes your children and she nurtures them in the Quran. But when you push her out and make her to feel like she's not wanted, she's not as good as the man, then there's a dislike in her and she passes it on to the children. And so the children go away from Allah rather than coming toward Allah. You mistreat your woman, you mistreat yourself. You push your woman down, you push yourself down. You pick your woman up, you and I go up. Are you speaking about black women? I'm speaking about all women, no matter what their color is. And let me say this, those who condemn me, who call me a bigot, who call me a racist, who call me a hater, who call me an anti-Semite. I want you to listen to me real carefully tonight. And if anything like that comes out of my mouth, raise your hand and stop me here. But you'll only be raising your hand no matter what your color is and cheering me on because that is what they say I am. But tonight, you judge for yourself. And members of the press, <laughs> members of the press, I want you to know it is a great honor to me to see you in so much numbers here tonight. It is an honor. But dear members of the press, I want you to listen carefully to me so you get my words right tonight for once. That's for once. seem to have become quite a controversial fellow. <laughs> See, everywhere Farrakhan goes, there's controversy around this man. There has not been a black man in the history of America that has been so repudiated <laughs> as Brother Farrakhan. I thought they did a bad job on my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thought they did a bad job on Mr. Garvey. I thought they did a bad job on Kwame Touré and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. I thought they did a bad job on those brothers. But the stuff that they do to me so continuously. You might wonder tonight why Brother Farrakhan is smiling. I know something. I know something. Can you imagine? The governor of this state, Mr. Cuomo, the mayor of this city, Mr. Koch, senators and congressmen and assemblymen. Yeah, I don't blame you, brothers and sisters. They need it. some poor pitiful black leaders have spoken out they have condemned me without a fair hearing I know that Mr. Dinkins has not heard one of my tapes and most of these people that I've I talk with them on a personal one-on-one -on -one basis. They act as though they don't know me. Farrakhan is not a stranger. You know I'm not that kind of person. Why didn't you stand up and tell them? I'll tell you why in a minute. The mayor, the governor, the president, the vice president, the senate, they've called me a lot of ugly names. Now, if I were a man of weaker character, 
These kinds of ugly names would make me feel so badly that I would not be able to appear in the public. However, it is because I know the rightness of the truth that I speak and the rightness of the cause for which I am raised up by Allah that these words only serve as fuel for the fire in me to make me fight harder with the truth that I have received from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad.